Happy Monday everyone, this is Martha with Nature Niche and this week I want to talk to you about how to prevent uh, bird window collisions. And it's an important topic, uh, up to 1 billion birds die each year from hitting windows in the United States and it's estimated almost 50% uh, are uh, residential uh, glass collisions. And uh, that's uh, especially because um, birds see the reflections of the landscape, both the vegetation and sky, and they think it's a continuation um, of, their, of their habitat. And uh, also uh, high rise buildings at night where you have the lighted windows will attract um, bird species and cause collisions as well. Uh, particularly uh, nocturnal migrating species like orioles, tanagers, and warblers. So to learn more about that, there's the Fatal Light Awareness Program um, based out of Toronto. Um, and I'll also provide a couple other good links about uh, preventing window collisions. So you can see some of the different options I'm going to tell you about. Um, but basically you want to prioritize the windows that you try to address um, this problem. It's often only a small number of the windows that account for the majority of bird strikes. So uh, it's important to be aware, listen, and determine which ones are most problematic. Um, where have you observed a dead bird below your window before? Where have you seen feathers and imprints on your windows? Where have you heard them hit? Large windows um, that reflect the surrounding landscape and sky are usually um, problematic. Uh, windows that are nearest your feeders and baths um, or windows that are paired and at right angles like the ones here. Um, those would be the ones I'd pay attention to first. And uh, you can do things like apply visible patterns to the outside of the glass. And that's very important. You want to um, do your retrofitting to the outside of the glass. Um, things like putting decals uh, on the inside of your windows are often, it's very ineffective because they're hidden by the landscape reflections on the um, outside. So there, it's not really a great solution to put things on the inside of your windows. Um, you want to try to create patterns that are readily visible to the birds um, from at least 10 feet away. So as you're arranging, doing patterns, step back, make sure um, that it's visible. And as an example, you can use vertical or horizontal stripes and you want to space those two inches apart and have them at least uh, one eighth inch wide. And white often is the best color to be visible um, against multiple kinds of reflections or dots um, at least a quarter inch across and that's per the American Bird Conservancy who's they've done a lot of research on this topic. Um, remember that the bigger the dots, the bigger the lines or the figures, whatever you're using, uh, the better because they can be seen um, by the birds at a greater distance. So that, that two inch spacing is like the gold standard um, and should deter almost all species, even the tiniest little hummingbirds, because um, what you're what you're doing is minimizing the gaps. They see the gaps between um, the pattern and think that they can fly through. So you want to minimize um, that space that they perceive that they can uh, fly through. And you can use things as simple as like temper paint. Um, you can use chalk pens. Uh, I use window decals, tape. There are safety films, including um, uh, one-way uh, transparent films. You could use a bar of soap if you're having an immediate problem and don't have that, you know any of those things. You can use sticky notes on the outside of your window until um, you can find a uh, better better solution. Um, there are also like 3D options that you can do to the outside of your windows um, mounted 
up in front of the windows. So things like insect screens, having your screens on the outside is great, um, a great deterrent. Uh, or there are nets, and if you're using netting, you want to make sure that uh, the spacing is 5 8 inch or smaller because you don't want the birds to get entangled if they do hit it. Um, and at least three inches off of the window pane and taut enough that when the birds hit it, they aren't actually hitting the glass behind, but bouncing, um, bouncing off. And you want, again, at least um, or four, four inch vertical spacing on any of that external sort of 3D option for the uh, most effective result. And um, that external option may be the best solution for hard to reach windows where you can't um, apply decals easily. And even some window washing companies are now offering installation of bird friendly measures as a service. So you might consider that if you have some windows you can't get to easily. New windows, like replacing your windows can be problematic. A lot of the new energy efficient windows have coatings that are more reflective. Um, a lot of times the new panes of glass have fewer dividers uh, to break up the reflection. So you have more solid glass, um, you know, big sliding doors. Um, and then a lot of times your screens end up in between the panes of glass and, and don't break up the reflection. So consider that if you're getting new windows, you can do things like ordering full external screens. You can apply retrofits like the um, decals I talked about. That's, we sell a couple different kinds at the store that are um, mostly retrofitting existing windows. Um, and then you can also order bird friendly glass. There are lots of options with patterns in um, ultraviolet with ceramic um, etched or with printed patterns or external shades or providing awnings that um, cast shadows onto the window glass. So I wanted to talk a little bit about installing decals and I picked a terrible day to do that it's snowing here so don't pick a snowy day um you you really should aim for weather that's above 50 uh, degrees um, or you can clean your windows with warm water um, and with the vinyl like the etched vinyl like these window gems you can actually soak them in hot water to soften them and help them um, stick better but you always want to start with clean windows and um, you wanna leave them free of chemicals, the cleaner residue. If you have paint, like overspray flex, you wanna clean your windows, make sure all the dirt's off. You can take a razor blade um, and scrape the little flex of paint, uh, but you wanna remove old decals, any kind of gunk um, on your window. Evaporative cleaners work really well. Things like Windex um, don't leave residue. So make sure you're starting with clean windows and um, if you can, warmer temps. I'm, I'm gonna hold out till the middle of the week when it's supposed to be warmer here to get mine, uh, my window decals replaced and ready for the winter. And um, it's also important to know if you're using uh, UV reflective decals, like the window alerts, they do have a, a limited lifespan, so you want to replace them every four months or um, you can get a, a UV flashlight and at night compare a new decal to the decal you have on your window and if they faded, you wanna replace. That can be a little dependent on um, how much exposure to elements they have and what elevation you're at locally. And uh, I also like to use, so you can you know, put up all sorts of patterns of window decals. They can look very pretty. The, the, the UV reflective ones tend to look more like etched glass. Uh, the, the prismatic um, vinyl decals are more visible. They have more of a kaleidoscope prismatic effect that the birds pick up on. Um, 
and I like filling in between the decals to get to that, you know, two inch spacing gold standard I mentioned um, with a, a UV liquid. This is just like a bingo dauber, has the cloth tip um, and you can apply dots. Mine are pretty weathered and need to be reapplied, but it's a great way to fill in the gaps in between your decals. And then one last piece of advice um, is about where you locate your feeders and your baths for the birds and other wildlife. Uh, that can be very important and actually you can reduce window collisions a lot by thinking about that. You want to place your feeders and baths within three feet. So close within three feet of your windows or even on your windows for the lighter feeders. Um, and that's because the birds, if they get spooked by a predator, they really can't build up enough momentum to harm themselves um, bouncing, bouncing off the, the window glass. Or you wanna be greater than 30 feet away and that statistically um, reduces the risk of collision. Um, studies have shown that like putting feeders 15 to 30 feet from your windows uh, is really quite a dangerous place and you will have um, more problems, more injuries, mortalities uh, from collisions. So uh, keep that in mind and in combination with the other tips I mentioned, uh, we can help make our yard safe for our feathered friends. Thanks and have a good week.